make some noise, everyone. And can we have the flags coming up, please? And the intro song. To love the day, for to love the day. Who was bad? Who was worse? Fossil of the day, fossil of the day, all the blame, all the shame, fossil of the day. Fantastic. Excellent work, everyone. It's so nice to have you all here again. As you see, we didn't have any fossil of the day yesterday. Rather upsetting, but also fantastic at the same time. So it's nice to see you all here back again. My name is Isaac Astell. I'll be your host for uh, COP17. Fossil of the Day is put on every year by Can International. This year it's hosted by the Australian Youth Climate Coalition and supported by youth delegates literally the world over. And this week, ladies and gentlemen, we start on a rather special note. We have a special update as follows. <clears throat> We have a special update on a fossil award from earlier this week. It seems we've gotten some attention. As you may recall, Can award, awarded a fossil of the day to Poland on Wednesday for their apparent association with the European coal days. Well, the Polish government has responded. Round of applause, everyone. <laughs> Poland. <laughs> Yesterday, can received a letter from them explaining the situation further. In the letter, they explained that their logo was used without their government's permission and that they had asked, and they have asked the conference organizers to make it clear that Poland is not associated with the event. We must say that we are relieved that the Polish presidency decided to distance itself from this coal lobby event. What's more, we look forward to working with Poland to ensure that they become climate leaders by quitting coal and embracing a greener energy future. We also want to remind them, and all parties, that we hope we might have the opportunity to award a ray of the day sometime soon, and that they show true leadership at these talks. As always, we'll be watching carefully. Round of applause for Poland again, everyone. Fantastic. We also have some other news, ladies and gentlemen. We've also had a reply from a little known country. It's, uh, I think it's the northernmost province of the United States of America. <laughs> Canada, who accused us of being misinformed and ideological. However, here at the Fossil of the Day, we just like to defend ourselves quickly and say that their comments about not committing to the Toyota Protocol about playing hardball with galloping monkeys, and finally their desire to defend the car sands have all been peer reviewed. And so we'd like to welcome to the stage, Canada, to say hello today. Welcome to the stage, Canada. Please, everyone, round of applause. Ken is completely misinformed, and I have extensive evidence of this that has been fact-checked over and over again by none other than the oil and gas industry. <laughs> we actually have a wonderful plan to reduce our bourbon remissions. We should not have to stop polluting toxins into the atmosphere any more than any other country, just because we have some historical responsibility to do so. In sum, I can assure you that CAN is misinformed and that we are deeply committed to stopping renegade primate change. Thank you. Well, for putting the record straight and showing us that they clearly are the most informed country in the negotiations, the third place Fossil of the Day award goes to... <laughs> Canada! <laughs> the flags are black! How appropriate! <laughs> <laughs> the informed and survival driven award, Canada, uh, uh, with a third place fossil of the day. Canada's Environment Minister, Peter Kent, stated yesterday that the fossil awarded to Canada this week 
came from an uninformed and, ide and was ideologically driven. Yet, from the perspective of people on the front lines of global climate change, it would seem that Kent is one of the most uninformed environment ministers in the world. Rather than acknowledge its historical responsibility for climate change and work with other nations towards finding solutions, Canada seems to be ideologically driven to put polluters before people and profit before a healthy planet. When Canada's fossils were announced in the House of Commons, a round of applause broke out. Is the Canadian government laughing about death, starvation and displacement? If Peter, Gent, if Peter Kent were in Durban right now, he would know that no one is laughing here. In fact, other countries are condemning Canada for negotiating in bad faith. Canada is leaving the world no choice but to leave them behind here in Durban. Make some noise, ladies and gentlemen. A grim note, to be sure. But don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, we have some uh, slightly more light-hearted entertainment for you here today. We're going to do a little bit of shopping here on Fossil of the Day. Who'd like to do some shopping? <laughs> Who'd like to do some shopping? <laughs> That's more like it. And so we'll hand over to the uh, New Zealanders to sell us a little slice of their lovely island home. Please take it away. So on a positive note, we're going to give you well, all can, the please. opportunity to uh, buy a piece of pristine New Zealand forest. Who would like to start the bidding? I'll buy some four million dollars. Yep. Four million. Is that it? That's it? That's it? All right, six, six, million. Million. six million. Eight million. Eight million. Okay, we accept your offer. <laughs> so who would like to start the bidding? Four million. 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 More offers, more offers, three million. Three million. Okay, we accept your offer. So for now, our final piece of pristine forest, certainly not pre-owned. Who would like to start the bidding? Five million. Five million? Six million. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. I want higher. Ten million. Twelve million. That'll 13, do. 13. <laughs> Thank you for doing our part, your part for our economy. Is it? Excuse me, New Zealand. Uh, is that the same tree? No, no, certainly not. <laughs> no, no, it definitely looks like the same tree. No, no, it's different. They all look the same. Uh, and so, New Zealand, for royally screwing the world over, the second place Fossil of the, uh, fossil of the Day award goes to, drum roll everyone, on the thighs. Get down here. <laughs> New Zealand! Please take your place, the second place. The second place fossil goes to New Zealand for proposing the most flexible mechanism imaginable with no oversight or review. Being on the wild, bring on the wild west. They want to be able to use any market mechanisms they wish with absolutely no oversight or international review. There would be no way to ensure that the units from one mechanism have not been sold two or three times to another such mechanism. This would likely unleash a wild west carbon market with double or triple counting offsets and a likely increase of greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere. Make some noise, ladies and gentlemen. And finally, shame on the sheet, that's a bit rough. <laughs> Poor sheepies. And finally, we'll go straight into the first place fossil, little, uh, fossil of the Day Award. So, I've been forgetting to do the human mic. How embarrassing. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. First place fossil award. First place fossil award. Goes to. Goes to. <coughs> Brazil. Brazil. Fantastic. Brazil. Brazil, please, would you like to take your place at the podium? Or would you like to do your second speech from where you are? From where you are? Okay, Not a problem, Brazil. Okay, please yes, take the yes, mic. Yes, yes. Thank you. We are proud to receive this honor. Brazil doesn't usually win fossil awards, so this is a very special honor. As loud as okay. Brazil. S sorry. Okay. The Brazilian government has been working hard to pass a new forestry law. And this law is even better than the current law. 
the old law, the current law, keeps a lot of rainforest intact and has reduced levels of deforestation. This new law will be a giant improvement. Okay, sorry, uh, phone, just, yes, sorry. Hmm. Okay, um, yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Another offer for mm -hmm. Yes, 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 no, 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 okay. I don't have time for this. You take care of the rainforest. Sorry, sorry. Okay, bye bye, bye bye, bye. Sorry. Okay. So yes, so, yes. That yes, that was um, none of your business. Yeah. None of your business. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, the problem is that right now the big agribusiness companies in Brazil are very unhappy and keep our ministers very busy with all their complaints about the forest law. Our ministers are so busy that they have had to push back coming to the negotiations in Durban by several days. Approving the new forestry law would let agribusiness have their way and leave us alone so we have more time to focus on important tasks of building World Cup stadiums, hosting the Olympics and generally being world's, the world's environmental champion. Fantastic. Brazil, would you like to... Brazil, would you like to stand with your agribusiness colleague just over here for a moment while I read out the award? Excuse me, Brazil. That's my cord. <laughs> Brazil earns the first place fossil. As the world watches stunned by the lack of urgency in the negotiations in Durban, on the search for a global solution to a global threat, some countries are capable of a level of cynicism and disregard for the consequences of their action, which leaves us bewildered. This time, it is Brazil. Yes, Brazil, the same country that hosted the Earth Summit in 1992, that gave rise to the Climate Convention and later to the Kyoto Protocol. The same country that will host the Rio 20 meeting next year. To what end, we ask? If the new Brazilian forest law, now going through Congress, is approved as is, it will be a disaster for the Brazilian forests, for the climate, for the indigenous people in the Amazon and elsewhere, for the pres preservation of biodiversity and priceless environmental services. What is Brazil asking for here? If back home the new law creates the opportunities for an increase in greenhouse gas emissions many times Brazil's total emissions today. Actually, the negative impact of the new law has already begun. And the law has not even gotten the final vote in the House and the Senate. When the Ministry of Environment announced this week that the new law will help Brazil meet the greenhouse gas emissions reduction goal, CAN sees no other alternative other than to present Brazil with our most notorious award, the fossil of the day. Make some noise, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Apparently, the Minister of Environment has delayed her trip to Durban because of the negotiations of the forest law in the Congress. We heartily welcome the Minister to come to Durban, receive this award, and to explain to the world how cutting down trees reduces emissions of greenhouse gases. Please take your place on the podium, Brazil. <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, may we please have, well, that concludes today's Fossil of the Day. Can we have the sing out, please? <clears throat> Fossil of the day, fossil of the day. Who was bad? Who was worse? Fossil of the day, fossil of the day. All the blame, all the shame. Fossil of the day. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen.